So the story behind this build is so long that I would probably need a dedicated video for it. But long story short, a friend built an ATX build, uh, but later for some reasons he wanted to migrate to a mini ATX build. Well, that was the greatest, shortest summary ever. Hey everyone, Mukul here. So yeah, basically the bizarre story is cut short here so that I can get right on the point and show you this build. All of these components had been bought by a friend without consulting me. So don't judge me for this build and just try to enjoy the story here. The processor in question or answer here is the Ryzen 3600. The motherboard here was a darn good choice here and also it was expensive. The ASRock B550M ITX AC is just lovely for its size. I mean, of course, the form factor here is a mini ITX, so the motherboard also had to be tiny and cute anyway. But it mostly doesn't cut anything on its features and the design aesthetics. But it's stupid to talk about how it looks when no one would be able to see in its glory in this case. The motherboard has these extra heat sinks for both the top and bottom of the NVMe drive in case it feels extra hot inside. If you know what I mean, uh, I mean the NVMe means here. The RAM here is a single DIMM Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB DDR4 at 3200MHz clock speeds. The GPU here is the Zotax GTX 1650 Super Twin Fan for the adequate gaming needs at 1080p. And having a maximum length to about 16cm helps the card sit extremely easy in this case. And for the power supply, we have the Antec VP500PC, a non-module power supply, which of course this friend already owned. And this possibly is the worst choice for a mini ITX build. But this was being migrated from an ATX build to the mini ITX build. So this about right about stops me from bitching more about it. But yeah, get a modular SFX PSU for a build like this. If you already don't have parts you want to reuse like us. And then there is a 256 GB a gigabyte NVMe drive and a standard Seagate one terabyte drive, uh, which runs at 5400 RPM. The mini ITX case here is our old classic Silverstone SG13, but the non-mesh variant. I mean, I would have preferred the mesh one over this any day, uh, which naturally has better ventilation. But I think it was not available at the time when my uh, friend was purchasing this. And also what has been bought, has been bought. So let's quickly start with the build. The SG13 from the very beginning felt of average quality. The lid, for example, can be bent by just average force, which can also be useful if you have a bunch of wires coming out, which you decide not to manage in the vacant areas inside the case for ventilation reasons. The plastic on the front of the case didn't feel very sturdy too. But overall, it's still a decent case and one of the most compact cases I've seen at least here. But thankfully, the case supports a full-sized power supply or else that would have been another surprise purchase for my friend here. The case comes with your usual switches and LED cables and HD audio cable for the front ports and a USB 3.0 cable for those front two USB 3.0 ports. So yeah, basically the case has two USB 3.0 ports in the front. And in case you were wondering which CPU cooler was being used here, then I would ask you to close your eyes and imagine the worst possible CPU cooler one could put in a mini ITX case. And yeah, it was the stock CPU cooler Wraith Stealth. Because we wanted to save some money, we tried to test the system as is uh, with this cooler and hope to check if it can just about uh, manage to perform to some extent with some undervolting. But boy, were we wrong or what? So as usual, I put the CPU carefully right on the motherboard first and then scaringly put the CPU cooler over it because yeah, this putting this cooler was scary enough. I kinda knew it might cause some thermal issues but never imagined the intensity with which it will bite my ass as soon as I complete uh, this build with this in it. Well anyway, I tightened its plastic screws alternatively one by one at uh, different shifts and as the effin motherboard was scratching my dining table, it made me put it on this cushion. Uh, make sure you plug the CPU fan sockets in the CPU fan pins and nowhere else. And then I installed the single module of the RAM and placed the motherboard IO shield in the case and then proceeded with placing the motherboard inside the case and tightened the four screws it needs. Make sure you have a long screwdriver for the screws inside this congested case because well, you made that choice here. And oh yeah, I had to remove the PSU support bracket before putting the motherboard in. So make sure to put it back because what all a power supply needs is a good support in the end. Plugging the other corresponding connectors on the board was one of the toughest tasks as my big hands weren't having fun with the tight space inside the case. So be a little careful and make sure you don't hit any parts of your hand against the edges here. 
and putting in the power uh, and reset pins was one of the another toughest task to go through. I mean this part was so sucky that I will make sure that my worst enemies somehow face something like this in their lives at least once too. I'm horrible. The case comes with a 3.5 inch hard disk bay which needs to come out completely for the hard disk to go in. So just slide the hard disk in this orientation and put the few screws and tighten it up and place the hard disk bay back where it came from. Easy peasy. And this sweetly sized graphic card was bought my friend uh, when he got his ATX build built. But the size of this just complemented the case. So to install it, I had to remove the back supporting bracket and then I had to remove both the slots. The GPU installation was the easiest to do in this case. It was lengthy but felt very sturdy overall as this GPU was also quite compact anyway. And yeah, also this case has to travel from one city to another in the future. So mounting your GPU this well in the case was quite uh, reassuring for its safety. And only on my channel you can get such a mustardy feast for your eyes in the year 2020. No wait, it's 2021. Damn, this now feels even worse. I really felt like snipping them but I let it go due to my merciful nature. At the time of shooting this, I didn't give much thought and placed the PSU fan facing upward, which was obviously a mistake as there was no other exhaust in this super tight case. So just don't freaking bash me yet. To fit the PSU in, I had to actually bend the top back leg of this case and thankfully it was easy to bend and restore its position easily. So yeah, sometimes having bendable uh, metal sheets on the case is also helpful. And as expected, the CPU fan and the base of the PSU are about to kiss each other. Well, the terrible choice of the components here made the forcible act of love look disgusting. But just bear with this as by the end of this video, all of this will be fixed. After fixing the PSU in the case uh, with its screws in, I give you the sight of one of the most congested case looks ever in the history of mankind. And as there were practically no intake and exhaust fans, I was pretty sure the Ryzen 3600 will get a good tan inside the case. But then a quick test showed me the idles of the case were hovering around 85 degrees Celsius. So yeah, this shit ain't gonna work clearly. I mean, I was anticipating terrible thermals, but seeing the temperatures being shown at sometimes uh, 90 degrees even at idles, well, all of that actually scared the shit out of me. And to explain this a bit, I have invited my new and improved friend from Hardware Mana uh, to explain why this was a bad idea to even try in the first place. Hello people, Sunny here with Hardware Mana and as Mewbot said, Miniatix cases and a stock cooler is not the best recipe. Let me explain why. See, the AMD stock cooler pulls air from the top and pushes it over the sides. But in a small case like the Silverstone used here, you cannot expect good airflow because of multiple reasons. Three major ones are the lack of uh, proper airflow due to cable clutter, the restricted front panels or the side panels, and the heat producing GPU. To overcome this, all-in-one liquid coolers are always recommended for mini attic systems. And uh, because of the nature of the design, they are mounted closer to the fresher air. They get direct access to the air and uh, whatever the heat it dumps out inside the case affects the temperatures lesser than the air coolers so it's always better in the longer run apart from this there are also many other benefits of liquid coolers for uh, smaller systems because they can uh, soak up heat much much more much much better than air coolers so they can handle spiky cpu loads better and uh, they take longer to reach their heating saturating point and apart from it they can also be smaller technically smaller than air coolers for the same amount of heat capacity so this is all from my side. I will hand over the mic to Mr. Mewbot so he can tell you more about it. Well, thanks man. And so I called up my friend and told him, dude, the whole rig is in flames right now. But then we laughed because I'm really bad at pranks. And then I asked him that there is no other option but to spend more. And so we bought a Corsair AIO, uh, the H60 in this case, which has had a good reputation to it and was easily available here at a good price. I had contemplated buying a low profile air cooler and then it would have required a separate purchase of a 120mm fan anyway and seeing how bad the clearance between our existing cooler and the PSU was, I decided that it's better we go the AIO way this time as this is the way. This AIO has a minimalistic look to it and it already comes pre-applied with a the thermal paste on it and it also has a bit of lighting component on it. 
So I removed the older thermal paste over the CPU with the help of uh, isopropyl alcohol. And yeah, don't drink it just because it says alcohol on it. And then installed the CPU brackets back in and installed the new AIO. But I'm not sure if I should detail all the steps here for installing this AIO in and make the video even longer. So let me know if you would want me to do a separate video on it and I will try to do so because I definitely have all the footage already with me. But to put it briefly, I installed the pump first on the motherboard before putting it in the case. And installing the front 120M fan was a bit tricky, but I somehow managed because there was no one else to manage all this here. And we had already spent a good amount of money on this build, so it had to be built. So yeah, have a good look at how the pump lets up as later this will not be visible. Make sure to add the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antennas on the back of the IO shield on the motherboard. Especially in case you don't plan to hook an Ethernet cable to the system. And ta-da! Here is the final build with lights being lit up from the bottom of the case. I mean the style here was pure stealthy and no blinks. Which is actually good for a lot of people. Checking the thermals again, this time at stock BIOS settings, the temperatures dropped to 53 degrees Celsius at full CPU load during a Blender CPU render test. And if I just undervolted the CPU to 1.1 volts at 3.8 GHz all core frequency, the temperatures dropped even further by 4 degrees Celsius. But all of these previous tests were performed when the PSU was kept facing upward. So later I made sure to install the PSU fan facing down right over the motherboard so that it can become the only exhaust of this case. And doing this showed an improvement in temperatures by a good 5 degrees Celsius on the same previous tests. So yeah, just put the darn thing facing down if you are planning a setup similar to this. So we were finally enjoying and celebrating with this new chillaxed mini ITX build we just completed. And I just completed. There was no one else. And I was also able to enjoy Black Ops 2 running at around 60 FPS at 55 degrees Celsius at these settings. So yeah, pretty satisfied by all of this. By the end of it, finally. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from the bad pre-existing choices we had here with all the mentioned components. You can hop onto our Discord server too if you want to discuss more about this or uh, really literally anything else too. Do leave a like and sub with the bell if this video helped you in any way that helps me a lot to grow here. Stay safe humans. That's all for today. Mewbot out. Damn, I'm tired.